Waking up with us. This is the view this morning in East Grand Rapids, and we are ready for the eclipse this afternoon. We are so ready, and we should get a pretty decent show here in West Michigan. We've got Sarah Flynn. She's got probably the best view. <laughs> She's in Little Rock, Arkansas, as part of our team coverage of the eclipse today. Yeah, that's in the path of totality. David Horak is in Grand Rapids, where employees at the Public Museum are ready for 94% coverage. Mm -hmm. Of course, that will depend on the forecast. Of course, and who better than to tell us what we can expect than Matt Kirkwood, who we begin with this morning. How's it shaping up out there, brother? Oh, it's excellent. Very excited to see the forecast for the clouds today breaking up. Uh, we've been watching this diligently over the past couple weeks now that we're in the, uh, the time frame that we can actually see what's going on with those clouds. It's been touch and go, touch and go, but it is a go. Uh, this afternoon. Here's a live view, dry conditions out there. You probably saw the showers press in yesterday evening. Those have now shifted well to the north and east. A few lingering around the Thumb region, just north of Detroit and around St. Clair, uh, Lake St. Clair. But uh, for us, drier air moving in and we're starting to see some clearing out there with milder temperatures. Currently at 42 in Grand Rapids and some mid 40s out there as well. Here's a look at those clouds again, moving out with the rain showers and lots of uh, clearing taking place. Won't be long before where we see the first stages of twilight uh, developing the eastern horizon. Off to the south, you can see more clearing out there. Hopefully, Indiana stays clear in western Kentucky all the way down to Arkansas, where Sarah Flynn is. Uh, here's uh, one of the forecast models. Shows uh, the clearing sky out there. We'll take you right to right around the peak viewing time, and you can see around Coldwater, Battle Creek, a few high-level clouds. Otherwise, it looks like excellent conditions for us, so get those... Uh, uh, the eclipse glasses ready. Here's the forecast, and not only do we have the clearing sky out there to look forward to, we get to look forward to also warmer temperatures. This will be the warmest day so far this month of April, and actually all the way since about uh, mid-March, with a high expected right around 70 degrees, with a breeze out of the south and west. But enjoy that warmth. It's not going to stick around with some cool air moving on, uh, moving in later in the week. All right, Matt, thank you. And we know uh, about 50 people from West Michigan mm -hmm. are traveling as a group to catch the total solar eclipse. Yeah, Sarah Flynn traveled with them to Little Rock over the weekend. Sarah, kind of walk us through what those lucky travelers will see today. Hey, Donovan and Teresa, good morning. We are live in the state capital of Arkansas, Little Rock. It's a pretty pleasant morning out here and was good travel conditions for that group of 50 that you mentioned that traveled all the way from Grand Rapids down to here in Little Rock. And actually this morning, they're sleeping soundly, sleeping peacefully, something we weren't sure was going to happen. But the forecast is actually shaping out to work in our favor. Initially, we thought we would have some issues with cloud cover paired with a severe threat that is expected to develop late today. We thought potentially we'd be making a mad dash to a different part of the country for better viewing. The latest weather models indicate high clouds are still expected in the vicinity, which could have an impact on the sun's corona and viewing that site. However, that looks to be a factor for a large portion of the path today. I was able to catch up with our very own Chief Emeritus Bill Steffen yesterday on choosing Little Rock as a location despite it being a severe weather threat day. And here's what he had to say about that. I think that we're going to luck out on the severe weather. There's going to be severe thunderstorms tomorrow and there's a large slight risk area that's been outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. This is for northeast Texas. It does come up into parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. But I think the storms aren't going to develop until about mid to late afternoon and the eclipse will pretty much be done by then. Yeah, Bill went on to say that hail is actually the main threat, which could provide some issues leaving here in Little Rock and actually other portions of the country. Traffic already expected to be bad. As we were driving in, there was construction signs nearly everywhere telling people to stay in place after the eclipse so they prevent those traffic jams from happening. So a little bit of a double-edged sword, something we'll continue to watch as the day shapes out. But for now, looking like it's going to be a pretty good sight just after or just before 2 o'clock uh, later on this afternoon. For, for now, we're live in Little Rock. I'll send it back to you. All right, and my friend, good to see you, Sarah. Thank you back home. We won't really get the full effect, but we still will get to experience something spectacular. It's pretty close. Yeah, <laughs> We yeah. have David Horak at the Grand Rapids Public Museum with how employees will help you experience all of that. <laughs> good morning, David. <laughs> Yeah, pretty close indeed, uh, uh, Teresa and Donovan. We are here at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Many things on tap for you to take in the eclipse and learn more about the universe beyond this planet and, of course, the moon that's going to be blocking our view of the sun. So here with me, Jack Dulesky, the planetarium manager here at the Public Museum. You got ourselves here a toy, but it's not just any toy. It's an instrument that will allow people to truly take in the eclipse. Walk us through this specifically interesting telescope. 
Sure, so this is a 10 inch reef reflecting Mead telescope and we are going to have it set up on the Blue Bridge for people to see the solar eclipse. And so what is what is special about this telescope versus your usual suspects? Well it's a, just a great telescope and one of the things we did is we have these custom built uh, solar filters that we're going to put on on the front of it. Yeah because obviously don't look directly into the sun and it's definitely more magnified with a regular telescope. So how, what would people be able to see with the eclipse with that solar filter in the telescope versus of course what they would usually see just with the eclipse glasses themselves? Yeah you can see a, a much clearer image of the sun more magnified and and you brought up a good point the reason that it's magnified that means that's you can't have binoculars and then your eclipse glasses behind the binoculars because that is, is potentially dangerous. Plus it's complicated too. You know, why add more work to the fray? Um, how many of these do you have on tap? Uh, we have four and maybe a backup one. We'll see how <laughs> busy things get. Yeah, exactly. Because it could, you may never know what you're going to have in terms of crowds. So uh, what else uh, should people know in terms of getting here today? Because there's plenty of things to do from the plan uh, planetarium itself to just other activity other activities throughout the day excuse me yeah definitely we had more than a thousand people come out here for for 2017 so uh just keep that in mind when it comes to parking or taking the bus um you know people are coming out sounds good all right thanks so much jack and buck 75 for each pair of eclipse glasses they still have some available plenty more details about what they have uh in store at the grand rapids public museum later on in the day break but for now Teresa donovan back to you all right, David, thank you. And if you haven't been able to find those certified glasses yet, you can always watch on your screen. Yeah, our Blake Carms will join Phil Panarski at the live desk today for digital eclipse viewing. You can check that out at 2.30 this afternoon.